All right, so if I have modified my sketch where I'm more excited about it, now I need to build space to build the different parts of my creature um, really in separate parts of the assembly floor. So I'm going to build the head, I'm going to build the body, and then I'm going to connect the head to the body. So I'm not going to start at the eye and build it out from there because I'm going to lose the structure that way. So I need some space. Uh, I also need to make sure that my sketch, like if I did my sketch in my sketchbook and I photograph it in the computer, I need to make sure that it's high enough resolution for a portfolio piece on its own. So I'm going to go to image size, image, image size, and I'm going to make sure it's a, around 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So just like our landscape, right? So when I'm finished compositing this creature and it looks really good, it can go right into my landscape and be a Godzilla-sized figure if I want it to be, right? Because it will have the resolution to really fill up the whole of the landscape if that's what I want. Next, I'm going to go to canvas size. And I'm going to grow the space around my sketch to 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. If your character sketch is taller than it is wide, then you would reverse that. It would be portrait format. Mine's going to be landscape format. And I'm going to use the extension color of gray. So that gives me kind of a factory floor in which to assemble these parts. So these are my notes. It's my notes layer. I'm going to go ahead and label that. This is my sketch layer. So it's all set. And now on top of it, the first thing I'm going to build, actually I don't even need a new layer because I'm going to bring it in. It's going to be the head, right? The head is always the focal point of a creature. The angle of the head tells us how to interpret their posture. And so I'm going to go to my head reference and I'm going to start bringing things in. Let me just show you how important angle is in finding your reference. I'm actually not going to use this reference, but this is the, the one I showed in the last video because I like that head so much. Why can't I use the body? Well, the body's all out of focus, right? But I could use where the joints were. And if I just wanted to kind of give up control of that, you know, I could just pile everything up on top of this reference. Notice how it's big enough, clearly. Um, and then how do I select that head? Well, I simply do a rough selection around it, give myself plenty of overlap, and then Command-J to duplicate out that head, and then immediately erase the smart layer so it's not taking up a lot of memory. Whoops. And then I can move that head over. I'm going to lock all of these so I don't accidentally select them. Turn on auto select. And now I'm going to start to size the head immediately. So I can scale it down. I can rotate it. I could try to get it based on my sketch. Maybe work it a little bit bigger than I need. But figure out the angle. So this is a slight difference, right? I can see both eyes here. This head is slightly more tilted to the to the front than mine is. So is there a way I can use transform to push this eye forward and the other eye back? Yeah, you can you can use skew as well. But I will never be able to get rid of those pixels, right? So you can change the shape of the head. from that to that, and that makes it look like it's at the right angle, right? But you, you're going to probably want, if I were using this for my creature, I would probably just replace the eyes with something else, right? And really, I use my, my creature's eye design as opposed to this. So that's why finding the angle and reference that's as close as possible and really shows the, the structures the way you want them. The connections, like with the eyes, um, is really, really helpful. Because the problem is I, I'm going to have to do something to like cover that up. Because I want the eyes on the side of the head instead of on the front of the head.
or I can just give up and say, okay, I'm going to use that head, but then I'm losing my creative control, right, of what the creature is. Okay, so I'm going to erase that, and instead, to avoid that problem completely, I'm just going to build it all out of mushrooms. So how might I do that? Well, I've got a bunch of different options. Generally, you want one kind of big, big texture that you can use. This is all my different head reference. And the one I'm most excited about, sometimes I'll mark them. But it's this one because it's slimy looking and weird, right? And it, the light's hitting it in a way that I find interesting that I can use as a head. So how do I do that? I bring it in, I'm going to do a rough lasso around it, only the mushrooms that are in focus here. This is going to be the top of my head. And I'm probably going to use five references just in the head alone, right? So that's the top. What can work as the jaw or the bottom? And I found this reference, which I really love. Right, which almost has kind of gills underneath and looks like tooth ridges. So I'll bring that in. This is going to be the bottom of my head. And again, I do a rough cutout. What's nice about mushrooms as well is they're usually a pretty uh, solid shape and solid color, which makes them easier to select out, easier than feathers or fur. And these are both really large, so I can go ahead and immediately shrink them a little bit. And I'm going to put one underneath the other. So I know I've got plenty of resolution. And then I'm going to move this layer up so it's overlapping. So now you can already see how I can start to get ahead and start to have an upper jaw and a lower jaw obviously needs some more finesse. And I can start to angle that head down and I have space for an eye. Okay, so now I found this beautiful reference. Look at that thing. Gorgeous, right? Really unusual. Looks very organic, hard to place. So that's definitely going to be kind of that big shape around my eye that contains it. Look how huge that reference is. Go ahead and roughly cut it out. It's going to be a little bit of a pain to select this more cleanly, but I don't need to do that yet. And then delete the smart layer. And then select it. Move it down and then angle it. But I have to pay attention to the lighting. So that if the lighting's hitting from here, I need to make sure that my shadows all make sense. And I can transform it. I can warp it. The beauty of organic things. Kind of work for my eye shape. Move it into place. Okay. And now I need an, a pupil. And I found this mushroom reference. And all of this is from Pixabay. And this is just so unusual, this kind of exploded mushroom cap. It will really make kind of a striking pupil. So duplicate that. And I'm going to have some very colorful parts to my creature. So it's kind of interesting that the head is going to be a little more drab. Okay, so all of these belong to the head so far. I'm not labeling them individually, but I will put them all in a group together. And then I get to place where I want the eye. And I can right away decide, because I'm, I'm building this um, larger than it needs to be, but only slightly larger. I can decide to Pinch it a little bit. Remember, you have all these transform controls. Okay. 
Okay. Now I need something for this, the muzzle, the upper lip. And I have a few potentials. I was thinking maybe this one would be good. I also have this one. But that doesn't seem like the focus works out as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. And this is already my fifth reference, and I'm just finding things for the head. So you only need to use five to meet the requirements, but you're definitely welcome to do more than that. And using more doesn't make it better. You just want to, you know, feel like you can control it and make it your own. And this is where I'm going to use the warp a little bit to control the angle. I want that yellow to be like the upper part of the mouth. By having the mouth slightly open, that's going to make this creature seem more active than even I have in my sketch. And then if I push it down below the eye, You can see how it's starting to work. Okay, so now how can I take all of these major features, get rid of that smart layer, and start seaming them together into a head that makes sense? First, I am going to select them all and put them into a folder. So instead of a new layer, I click on the folder once I've selected all my head layers. I'm going to call that head. And I'm going to call it assets, because those are all the things that make up the head. I'm going to give it a color. And I'm going to work from the, from the top down. Okay, so, so head is red. And now I can zoom in, and I can work from the back to the front, just like we did with the cartoon jumble. So... What's great about putting them all in a group is they'll all move together. If I select the group, I can move them, whoops, I can move them all together. What you do have to change is your auto select from layer to group. And then I can also scale them and transform them all together, even though they're separate layers. And that's very helpful. It won't let me warp them until I uh, condense them into one layer but I can do little tweaks just like I did to my sketch. Okay, now, actually I'm gonna go from the top to the bottom because that shows me what I actually need to cut out. So, first let's cut this out. Let's review some of those techniques. Because it's a creature, I want sharp edges. I'm not gonna be using a soft edged eraser very much. Instead, I'm gonna make a lot of clean cuts. And every once in a while, I'll feather it by a few pixels. So I'll show you how that looks. So if I do a really clean cut, I'll just do a section here with the lasso. And if before I hit delete, well, I'll show you. If I hit delete, that'll be on the right layer. If I hit delete and now zoom in, you'll see that that gives me an exact cut. There's either pixels there or no pixels there, but I'll miss things that might actually be useful. So often what I'll do is instead of it being, this is high resolution, a 0% feather in the options for the lasso, I'll make it a three pixel feather, which is not very much, but you'll see the difference. It will soften my selection automatically. Ah. So that I have a little bit of transparency, just a tiny bit within those three pixels. And that will help it blend in with some of the others. And if you feel like you need more than that, like especially if it's a fur, not a hard uh, texture, but a soft texture, then you can do that. The other thing about having the, the three pixel feather is if I just kind of cut out my own shape into this white mushroom, 